Hello guys and welcome back to TNT Madness. Today we are going to be looking at something that is really practical and that is a slime sand stacker. So for everyone that is waiting for me to actually do a big cannon, I'm currently working on a Leon Arch cannon and I just want to do a ton of testing so I get it completely right. So if all goes to plan that should be out next week. But anyway, what we have here today is a fully automatic sand stacker. So essentially what a sand stacker does is you'll have a giant water wall and if they have like a sky base or something, you normally have to st stack sand so it can go all the way up to the height of the cannon so that way you can use a hybrid can to get through the wall. And normally you'd build something like a Leon Arch can, like I just said, that can do mul multiple things at the same time, or you'd build a sand stacker and then build something on top of it or like a hybrid compressed can or something, or if you just build a normal sand stacker. So what you do with a sand stacker is you would build this giant machine that would fire out sand and it would make like a 50 high stack or something then you might fire it again after you've loaded again and that can take so long because they are normally extremely huge and this thing here has a lot of pros and only one thing that I can't think of that's good about it. So even though it does fire slowly which is the downside it is very small and you only have to reload it once depending on the height that you're at so this thing in comparison to some of the other sand stackers can be a lifesaver and I don't know why people don't use slime cannons as much as I do because they're a lot cheaper and they're a lot more practical than most of the other cannons but anyway let's take a look at this thing in action so what we have here is just a giant sand stacker with a giant pillar of sand and our general water wall that you'll find on pretty much any base with anyone that has any sort of skills and factions will build something like this. So let's say there is nothing down there, like let's say that's the ground and you want to get to this height. So what you do is you'd flick the lever and as you can see it starts pushing the sand out and it does it in just a motion and then the sand just flies over here and for some reason it is lagging and not updating properly so as you can see the sand is stacking down here one by one as I said it would take a while because but it's still doing what I said it would do and that is stacking sand slowly but surely and as you can see it's also firing sand above so this is the base level and one thing it can do really well is fire sand actually above the cannon so this can go generally higher than a normal sand stacker that would fire at even level. So as we can see we are getting near the max height so I'm just going to turn it off now and as you can see the last sand breaks and that's really the only downside. You can technically make this qu quicker by changing this to free text but then one really annoying thing happens and that is after every time you f every second time it fires it will break your sand. So that's really the only downside but as you can see we have got a giant pillar of sand and considering how big this is and how small this is I think it's definitely well worth it. So now I'm just going to briefly explain how this works and then get on to the tutorial. So the first thing that happens is pretty much all this is based on is just this clock down here. So all this clock is is just a basic 2x3 clock that you normally use. I would use a 1y clock but you can't use this any less than 4 ticks. If it was 4 ticks then you'd have the brand sand breaking effect that happened when I showed you the other one. So the minimum amount of ticks you can have is 5. So unfortunately it does take up slightly more space but somehow I managed to fit it into a 3x3 area. So after this is switched on, this torch will turn on which will go around here which will power this block which will turn the torch off and that just creates pretty much an infinite clock. So also this doesn't take inputs from this side at all. It just takes it from one side so that way you get a very simple and concise timing. So the first thing that happens is after this is activated, this is activated then two ticks later this thing down here is activated, then three ticks later this is activated, then everything will get pulled back, the sand will be pushed down into here and then it will activate again as we can see here. So it gets pushed down, then it gets pushed down and it just keeps redoing itself each time. So it's a very nice and simple contraption that works really well. Also if you're wondering why it's in this position instead of the pistons being retracted, that's just because we have to have the lever here because you could place it really anywhere else but it would still have everything powered so the way this works is having it unpowered so that's how it actually works so that's not really a problem it just looks slightly weird because most cannons don't have pistons ex extended straight away but anyway now on to the tutorial 
so now onto the tutorial so what you're going to need is a 3x3 area as well as 4 locks in height and you're going to need some building blocks, a slab, 4 redstone, 4 redstone repeaters, a redstone torch, 2 sticky pistons, a piston, a lever, 2 slime box, and a movable block which can be a melon dispenser or anything like that and some sand. So we're going to be building this from the bottom up so the first thing you want to do is destroy the block in the corner like so. Place a slime block on top, then we're going to come around the back here, place a repeater set to two ticks delay with a redstone behind it, followed by a block and your redstone torch on the side here. Then you're going to be placing a uh, redstone repeater there set to one ticks and another one here set to four. Then you want to place redstone here with a block here and this will create your infinite clock. After that you want to go ahead around the back and place down your lever. So the next bit we're going to be doing is building a little module up here which is going to require you to place a bit of redstone here, a block here with a piston on top and your removable block under it. This block will power this block which will of course power this piston and the reason we have this block here is so the sand can sit on it and it will not go through the block and break. Next thing you want to do is place two temporary blocks above it, then you want to come down, place a block like that, like there like so, place another block here redstone on top of it and then you want to come around the side here place a redstone repeater set to free text delay followed by another block a sticky piston on top with your slime block on top I made one absolutely tiny mistake and that is this block actually has to be an upside down half slab so that way it doesn't power this and that's only because if that is powered then this will never actually turn off so now you're actually finished and you can place your sand on top like here retract the lever and it'll be your sand stacker that you always wanted and needed so anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video, if you did please hit that like button and if you want to see two videos a week then hit that subscribe button you'll be notified. But anyway, goodbye from TNT Magic. <laughs>